Okay, so I'm going to show you just uh, some of the basics of Pygame. Here you can see I've got a file already set up. Um, I'm just going to walk you through some of the main po points that you need to have in every Pygame document. And then uh, we're going to do just a couple additions. Um, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So to begin with, right now we need to make sure we import Pygame at the very top. Uh, I'm also importing uh, the sys library that will uh, come in handy, particularly in quitting the game at the end. Uh, and then I'm also importing pygame.locals. That's a whole bunch of local variables, built-in variables. And uh, in Python, you can when you import, you can actually specify uh, what you save them as, what you import them as. And so I'm choosing to import them as game globals. And you'll see later on, I'm going to refer to that variable. Uh, now what I've got here is I've got a variable window. Of course, you can call it whatever you like. Sometimes uh, people will call it display surface or something like that. Um, and doesn't matter what it is, but we're going to make that equal to pygame.display.setMode. And then inside the brackets, we have a tuple. Uh, a tuple is a data, data structure. Um, and this one is holding just two values, um, 400 and 500. So the, this is the, the size of our window, 400 width, 500 height. Um, now we can change this. So I might go 600 by 400. Um, you can change it dynamically uh, if you put in a variable or something, but um, I'm going to start with that anyways. Now we need to make sure that we initialize pygame. pygame.init, that's a, init is a function, and that initializes our library after we've imported it. Okay, if you don't do that, you're going to run into errors for sure. Uh, next on line 7, you'll see we've got a while loop. Um, this is just important to have uh, a game loop. If we don't have a loop, then uh, basically we can't have any uh, sensing, we can't have any animation. Uh, all of the aspects of our game need to happen uh, within the loop if we want to see any change happening. Um, doesn't We don't necessarily need to be able to break it. As you can see, uh, this looks very dangerous. It looks like we've got an infinite loop happening. There's no way to to change this condition to false. Uh, but as you'll see, this is the next most important thing you need to put in your game, uh, a for loop. And so this is for event in pygame.event get. So it grabs all the events in pygame and it's a for loop. So it iterates through all of the events. And just imagine because this is in a, in the, inside the while loop, it is constantly iterating through all of the possible events in pygame. Uh, and then it's checking if the event type is the same as a global variable imported from pygame.locals.quit, then we're going to quit pygame and close the window. Exit the program. All right. Once you've got that, now we can start thinking about what do we want our game to do. All right, but just to show you what uh, what it does, I'm saving it, and I've already opened it up in uh, Idle here. And even if you make a change here and doesn't show up in Idle, we can just uh, switch back to it and hit F5, and it will run um, just the same. Now, if you type something wrong in this for loop, there's an error in here somewhere inside this while loop, then uh, pretty quickly, this is going to cause your program to hang and you're going to have to force quit it. But this seems to be working properly. It's 600 wide, 400 high, and I can close it and it closes. All right. So now inside, inside our while loop, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Um, let's start by drawing a rectangle. So in Pygame, we have a whole bunch of drawing tools, draw dot rect and that's uh, the function for drawing a rectangle first of all we need to specify what surface we're drawing on so we're drawing on the display surface uh, next you need to specify a color now you'll see in a bunch of examples uh, they 
will define their colors as a tuple and uh, it's all RGB, red, green, blue. Uh, values from anywhere from zero to 255. All right, so since it's RGB, if I wanna do red and pure red, I can uh, make this equal to 255.00 0, and that will be red. And I can put red right there. Uh, you can, of course, rather than use a variable, you could also just put 255 zero zero right in there like that um, but it's kind of nice using variables especially if you want other elements to be the same color uh, you can specify all of those colors at the top and then you can just refer to them with the variables and, and that's nice all right next i'm going to put another tuple this is going to be a four value tuple it's going to have the top left coordinates of our rectangle. The next value is going to be our width and the last one is going to be our height. Let's save that. Go back over to here and even though it doesn't have that updated code we can still just push F5 because it, I had opened it before and as you can see we don't see a rectangle. There's a problem here and there's one last command that I've forgotten that is pygame dot display dot update there's another function that's the that does the same thing and it's display dot flip big difference between dis, between flip and update is that update can accept arguments between these brackets here and uh, that is useful later on if you want to really optimize your game but you've only got a certain section of your window that's getting changed you only want to update a certain area then you can pass a rectangle or a list of rectangles uh, into there as, a, as the argument and it will only update those areas as opposed to updating the whole window now if we don't put any arguments it's going to update the whole window anyway in which case it's exactly the same as flip flip just refreshes the whole window. Uh, I'm just going to keep it to update though. All right, so now let's go back, rerun it, and see if it makes a difference. So now we've got a window, and with update, you can see we've got a black screen now, and there's our red rectangle. Again, this isn't a very interesting game so far. Definitely doesn't seem like a game. Uh, so next, let's get a background color in there. Um, and it's important that we change, we specify the order. Uh, I'm going to do it right here. So if you put in display surface dot fill, uh, then you can put a color right inside there. Um, I'm going to make it white, and that is full values for R G N B. That gives us white. There we go. And now if I rerun that, we should have a white background and there's our red rectangle. All right. If I put this after the rectangle, then that would do a fill of white after it and we won't see our red rectangle anymore. So order does matter here. Now let's, let's, just, let's just animate this. Let's animate our rectangle. Um, and so right now it's static. The position is static. The coordinates of the, the top left corner and bottom right corner of a rectangle are static. So let's change that. Um, I'm going to make some variables right now. So let's go rect x. Uh, we're going to set that equal to 0. Rect y is equal to 0. And now um, I'm going to also make change x equal to 0 and change y equal to actually not zero let's make it five okay uh, which means that these are going to change to rect x rect y rect x plus set fit 70 and rect y plus 50. now we've got a variable and as you know once we have a variable we can change it and that's what we're going to do. So um, let's just go rect 
x plus equals change x. Rect y plus equal change y. And that means it's, we're going to change our x and our y coordinates. It's going to change all of them by 5. All right. So now let's go back here, reload our game, and see what happens. All right. So it moved, and it seems like it, it grew as well, which is interesting. Um, so, you know, let's, but of course now it's, it, it just moved right out of our window. Um, let's keep it in there. So let's, let's see what happens here. So if rect x is greater than or equal to 600, then change x equals negative change x. What that means is once if if the x value of our uh, of our rectangle is greater than or equal to the right hand side, 600 is going to be the right hand side of our window, then I'm going to ch um, flip our 5 into negative 5. That way it's going to move back. All right. Um, and then we can also add in here an or and do the same for the opposite. So or rect x is less than or equal to 0. Then let's flip it as well if it moves all the way to the left-hand side. Now in Pygame with our y values, uh, y starts at 0 at the very top of the window. And then as we move down our window, the y value actually increases. So it's the inverse of what we're taught in school with the Cartesian coordinate system. It's actually the same with, uh, with Game Maker, if you've ever used Game Maker. And so now I'm going to do the same here. There we go. Let's reload this and see what happens. All right, now it's not just bouncing around, it's also increasing in size like crazy, and then it shrinks in size like crazy, and is moving all over the place. And the reason why it's actually increasing is because this, this value right here is actually referring to our width. This is referring to the origin, top left corner of our rectangle, uh, this is actually our width, and this is our height. And because we've got a variable in there, those are being changed as well. So let's just change these to be static. There we go. And now if we reload our game, there we go. Now we've got a bouncing rectangle going around. Now, as you can see, it goes beyond the bottom and the right side of the window. And uh, we can change that. Notice that right here we have it go all if it goes all the way to the edge. Now that's the top left corner. If that goes all the way to the edge, but so we need to account for the width of our rectangle, and that. So then we're going to have this be 530, and this is going to be 350. And now we should see that it accounts for the border. There we go. Now, as you can see, um, already we could change the shape of this, the size to be a lot smaller, and uh, we're well on our way to um, starting to have our uh, a pong game or something like that. But uh, those are the basics of Pi Game so far. You got some uh, animation going on, and uh, I look forward to our next tutorial. Bye bye.